Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm hoping you're all enjoying the weekend and have planned for some time apart, some Sabbath, where you can reconnect with God, with the divine. Today, as we enter into worship, I want to remind us that we live with grateful hearts, that we are so thankful for one another. I am thankful for all the gifts that you give and that you share, the gifts of your talent, your time, your conversation, the gift of who you are, but also of uh, your financial support. I'm stumbling a little with my words there tonight. I'll take a deep breath. Will you breathe with me? Just a moment. Once again, thank you for all that you do in your communities of faith, in each of your little congregations. May you continue to process, prosper with God's blessing. I'm struggling right now with some allergies that feel like a cold, but I know it's just allergies. And until we get that killing frost, this is what I sound like. <laughs> So stuffy head and medication that makes me a little loopy. So allow me some grace, if you will. But let's pray together. In your wisdom, O oh God, you brought us together today at this time and in this space to worship, to be one with you, O oh God. And may we each be a reflection of your love. Amen. So I'm going to begin with this. By the waters, the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept and for Zion, we remember, we remember, we remember Zion. Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we wept when we remembered Zion. There on the willows, we hung all of our harps when our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors called for enter entertaining saying, sing one of those songs of Zion. But how could we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hands wither. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. By the rivers of Babylon, there we wept. A story a story of how they wanted to hold on to something, but they were in a new space. A story of not being able to sing a new song in a new land. I think for many of us, that's where we are right now. We're finding it difficult to sing a new song. We're finding it difficult to find ourselves in spaces other than the form of our church buildings. Singing new songs in different ways. Singing in our cars. As we walk. But maybe it's not about singing. It's about how we are the church 
in new and different ways, and yet following each of our own missions. Those mission statements that include feeding the poor, clothing the naked, housing the homeless, being Christ's representatives on earth. How do we do all of these things in this new land? Because I believe, friends, that we are in a new land. This is a strange time, and it's gone on longer than anyone thought it might. And we're tired of it. And that this is the time that we have to dig in our heels and say, we need to change our ways now. We need to wear masks. We need to stay away from certain venues and places and people in order to protect one another, to protect neighbor as ourselves. So we sing these songs where we hung up our harps, where we left all those wonderful memories, which we will always hold dear as we move into something new. But you know, the psalmists don't just focus on the negative. They don't focus only on the weeping and the wailing and the sadness. So today, I'll share with you Psalm 149 as well. And it's entitled, Praise for God's Goodness to Israel. It reads like this, Praise the Lord. Good start. Sing to the Lord a new song. There it is. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adores the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the highest praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. Punishment on the peoples. To bind the kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all the faithful ones. Praise the Lord. How can we sing a new song? Well, the psalmist just told us. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, not an old song. A new song. So again, I'm using that as a metaphor. Let's attend church in a new way. For instance, the end of this month, at one o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to have drive-in church at St. Andrews in Mattawachan. Interested? It'll be an experiment in doing something in a new way. The topic will be St. Francis. We will be blessing our pets at this service. What a great way to bring your pet when you don't have to worry about bringing it into the building. There will be prayers about our pets, the animals in our lives, as we are blessed by each one of them. And for those of you without pets, bring a stuffed animal, bring something that represents the critters that have crossed your path. That's singing a new song in a strange land because we'll be outside. Earlier that day, I'm proposing at about 10.30, we will be worshiping in the sanctuary at Emmanuel and Shoot. Now that's tentative because I still haven't received all the information I need and I still have to send it off to our regional office, but I don't foresee any problems with any of that. I'm just waiting on one more thing.
but it'll be different. There's no hymn books, there's no Bibles, there'll be no bulletins, there'll be no singing. The church has been roped off. We'll be sitting in a new way. Sing to the Lord a new song. And we praise God. Bless God's holy name. And it goes on. Uh, praise his name with dancing. Hmm, I don't think I'm going to be doing any dancing. Making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Well, I've misplaced my tambourine. So if you've seen the red-handled tambourine, let me know. The lyre, maybe that's my ukulele. There's a possibility there. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Now I understand the couch to which this refers would be a place where the Roman people would sit or other people would kind of lie and eat and converse. Maybe not the same as our sofas today, but how many of us view this service sitting or lying down on our couches? A new way instead of sitting on hard benches in our sanctuaries. And I do believe that the older seats in the church here in Denby with the straight backs were meant to keep you awake. You were not going to fall asleep if you're sitting in those old hard pews, let me tell you. Let the praises praise God in their throats. So here I am telling you that this singing a new song is a metaphor, but it's also real. So sing in your own home. Sing in the car. Sing when you take a walk in the woods. And here's the kicker, sing in the shower. Shower is the best place in the world to sing, even if you don't think you can sing. All that extra moisture in, this, in the shower, the resonance that you feel when, when the water is coming through, it's singing a new song in a new place. That's how we can do this. And sing the songs of praise that you love so much. Find them on your iTunes or Spotify or YouTube. Find them on a radio if that's how you find them. But find recordings of those hymns of praise that touch your heart. Those ones that you love dearly. And sing those songs in a new way. I think I've made my point. Now what about this two-edged sword? Now we talked about this a little bit at Bible study. And when I think of a two-edged sword, I often think of the long sabers that are sharp on both sides with a point that the knights in armor fought with. The rapiers, right? But then we also talked about the sword dance that's done at Highland Games. Two swords, both of them double-edged. And the dance that went with it. A two-edged sword can be dangerous, too. When I think of metaphors, the tongue can be a two-edged sword. It can be loving and kind, and it can be mean and cruel. It's interesting that the psalmist would put that in here when we're talking about dancing and singing and playing music in new ways. And then all of a sudden he brings this up. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. Hmm. Well, that's not really what we're about. And if we were to take this psalm and put it into the New Testament, you know those stories where they say, if you had all the people in the world, you could sit down to dinner with, who would it be? I would love to be able to ask Jesus this question. Why does the psalmist start out so good and then end up with all this violence? Now, part of that is the history. As they share their stories, the new song would have been used in September with the beginning of the new year in the, the Jewish life, possibly, as they celebrate something new. 
It's like when a couple get married in certain ceremonies, they jump the broom for something new. They're jumping together into a new life. But I don't think we're about vengeance, are we? We look at Christ and we think, forgive. We look at Christ and think, love. That's the new song. This is glory for all his faithful ones, the psalmist wrote. Praise the Lord. May we continue to praise God in and out of our sanctuaries, Maybe your sanctuary is a cabin in the woods. Maybe your sanctuary is sitting on the dock by the water. And maybe the end of the month, that sanctuary is going to be your own car as you listen to the service. Sing to the Lord a new song. Wow. Let's do that together. Sing to the Lord a new song. So the psalmist had, had said in 137, how could we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I think I answered some of those questions for us. May you take your song and sing it loud and clear. Amen. May God give us understanding as we've heard these words from the psalmist today. Amen again. As we head into prayer and the Lord's Prayer, there's a number of folk on our prayer list we continue in prayer for Karen Coxix, for Gary Peters and the family, for Dale Rosenblatt, who's suffering from cancer, for Faye O'Brien, who's in hospital in Kingston after suffering a stroke, for our elderly who find themselves isolated and lonely, whether they're in long-term care facilities or still in their own homes. And we once again lift up all the teachers and the children and the support staff who have or will be going back to school this coming week. The world needs our prayers. We need the prayers for each other. We lift up praise, prayers for all the communities that gather through live worship online, through recorded worship, and for those who don't worship, we pray that you will find peace and happiness and love in these strange times, in these strange places. All this we ask in Jesus' name and we lift them up to the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Find comfort in the fact that when two or three are gathered, that Jesus is there. And be at peace. We're closing today a familiar tune about hope. I'm just going to see if I can catch my breath here. We shall go out with hope of resurrection. We shall go out from strength to strength go on. We shall go out and tell our stories boldly. 
tells of a love that will not let us go. We'll sing our songs of wrongs that can be righted. We'll dream our dream of hurts that can be healed. We'll weave a cloth of all the world united within the vision of new life who sets us free. We'll give a voice to those who have not spoken. We'll find the words for those whose lips are sealed. We'll make the tunes for those who sing no longer. Expressive love alive in every heart. We'll share our joy with those who still are weeping. Raise hymns of strength for hearts that break in grief. We'll reap and dance the resurrection story. Including all in circles of our love. We shall go out with hope of resurrection. We shall. Make the tunes for those who sing no longer. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his holy name. May we go this day singing our songs. Maybe there are songs of lament, the sadder tones, the we sat down by the rivers in Babylon and we wept. So perhaps there's that weeping and lamenting in your life. Sing those songs. Sing those songs for joy as you've just finished a Zoom call with family or as you pray for one another. Place those songs of thanksgiving and love in your heart, not only today, but always. And we sing. We are one as we walk this road together. We are one as we journey side by side. We are one even though we may be different. We are one. We are one. And all of us who gather said, Amen. Have a great week, my friends, filled with blessings and richness and prayer and singing. God bless.